right? So to see if anything new you get when we discuss, maybe no, right? Okay, recording has started. Oh, <laughs> Jing Hao, thank you. <laughs> How come on my side I cannot? I'm not authorized to do recording, right? Thank you for recording. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I I miss out this part. Mm. Well, a lot of steps, huh? No, oh, I need to take note uh, before we proceed. <laughs> right? Okay, recording, recording. Okay, so let's get started. Right? <clears throat> You have developed a lambda function, right? As I said, which is to, uh, you can write any code over there. Uh, we are using Node.js, right? Uh, the function of this uh, lambda function is to get that item from the DynamoDB table based on the, uh, what do you call, breed, right? And this lambda function, once you put there, of course, you can test, click the button, you can test it to invoke. But in the reality, what happened, once you put this, this code uh, in the lambda service, AWS lambda service, this code uh, basically is sleeping, right? Let's put it in this way, sleeping, right? Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. And then if something, someone knock at the door, right? Someone knock at the door, there's an event all right, uh, which will trigger or wake up this lambda function. And lambda function will be executed, right, and then return the result. If uh, after that, if nobody, uh, nobody call this guy lambda function, hey, this guy back to sleeping. Oh, sorry, back to sleeping. So that, uh, that that's a part, right? So that's why you call it event driven, right? Event driven. <clears throat> Uh, okay, maybe I post for. So you know, lab. Uh, you know, lab. What events are used to call or the trigger this um, lam, lam, lambda function? Can you recall? They just take a look at what we we have done in lab five, right? Once we put a lambda function and then do all of the things. So in the end, uh, what event uh, uh, trigger the lambda function? Which event? Uh, you select category. Hmm. You select. User, oh, user, 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 oh, all my, all of my, user, 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 user. Okay. All right. Make everybody on the same page. I have so many, so many browsers, so it confused me. Let me give you my lab five link. Yeah, you click this guy, right, to see if you can it work in your browser, right? In your browser. Maybe you will see this error. We'll talk a little bit in more detail. I'm not very sure if this is an examination question, right? But we we have to prepare for it. Now, even no exam, but this concept, we have to have a better picture of it. Uh, cross engine resource sharing, right? So, so it's not in the lecture slides, I'm not discussed in detail in the lecture slides uh, provided by AWS. So I will add on a little bit after term break. Cross resource origin sharing. Yeah, origin sharing. All right, so on your side, are you able to 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 use this application as a user? Did you encounter any course error or whatever? Because this course error, even yeah, let me see, where is my browser? I get lost. All right, let me do this. Ding dong. 
search, search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I search the braid as what. Uh, I'm getting older, so I saw your name, and then when I retrieve from my cache <laughs> from my Dynamo DB table, I cannot find your, cannot retrieve the name. Uh, Xavier, yeah, Xavier said. What Xavier say is, once a user, you can see my my screen as well. When the user select the braid. I think there are many people using <laughs> because the Dynamo DB uh, is provisioned with a uh, very limited uh, what they call throughput. You you remember the read capacity, write capacity. The read capacity I think is only one. So if <laughs> yeah, so wait for a while. All right. Yeah. So they they have this fair to to the cost right. So I have to uh, actually we I have always followed the practical nodes to enable the cross, but now it seems that our backend, especially when the way the what do you call this lambda uh, from machine retrieve the uh, data from DynamoDB, the DynamoDB the throughput right is very very low, uh, but if I enhance it, then I have to pay more because uh, what do you see here uh, this. This application, uh, right, uh, is hosted on my own account. Yeah, own account. Yeah, let me do the refresh. Yeah, so let's use the use. Right, then do this. Yeah, so there is some capacity issue, I think. Right. Okay, so back to Xavier's answer. You are right. So what events when the user select the cat brain? Right. If they don't select the cap rate, they uh, this guy uh, application will choose uh, all break or right all break right. But this is very uh, resource consuming. If we when we get started with our application, and then we will get all the breeds of all cats right. So then if you think of 10,000 users, right, come to us. They, on the home page, right, by default, we will give them all of the pets, right? We will consume a lot of resource on our Lambda function, DynamoDB throughput, right? And then the thing is, the user who are using our application, they may not be interested in warp cats, right? So that means we work too hard, right, waste our money. Right, we should save some money to buy bubble tea, right? Okay. Yeah, so let me back to your question, your answer. User select cat break, all right? Okay, everybody listen, right? When the user, so it seems that the first, the event is come from the user. User click or select, right? So this is the event. Uh, select, right? Yeah, or the event is uh, when this HTML page is loaded, right? They have some unload, right? So these are the events come from user. Yeah, correct. So, Xavier, your answer is correct. Now we have to think along this line uh, before we move on is User click the break, select the break. This is the event. Or whenever the page loaded, this is the event, right? Okay, and then what happened after this event occur? Yeah, so now you, you give me the answer. Yeah. And get your thoughts. What happened when the user, when the unload or when the user select break? What happened? This is events. These events, and then after this, click select the breed. What happened next? What happened next? Your source, please. Yeah. What happened next? What happened next? Uh, the call lambda function, the lambda will look through the DynamoDB. Yeah. 
so what happened next? Call lambda function. And once the lambda function is called, right, and then this guy lambda function will look through the dynamo DB table. Actually, yeah, we're, actually we are not looking through the lambda will not look through the dynamo DB table. Dynamo DB dynamo DB service will look through the table, right, and they get what lambda function is requesting for the breed, right? Whether it's war, whether it's Russia, Russian, Russia blue, right? Yeah. Okay. Correct. And then it seems that there is one more event in the pipeline. Uh, what happened before the lambda function is invoked? After you click the select the breed, there is one more event. That means before we call lambda function, something else happened before that. Something happened before that, before calling lambda function. Or I put the question this way, who, Xavier, who called the lambda function? Uh, yeah, correct. She, uh, how to pronounce your name, huh? uh, Miss uh, Shi Tan, is it? Help me to pronounce your name correctly. Shi Tan, okay, Shi Tan say yes. She tongue. All right. I try to map to Chinese word, but I cannot. Right. So, all right. So, API. API. Web API Gateway. Web API Gateway. Oh, this is, sorry, this is lecture 10. Huh? So, we just put together. Like, never mind. Right. Hmm, okay. It will be API gateway. Who called this web API gateway? Or put the question in this way, who called the web RESTful service uh, in uh, the web API gateway? No, not web server, Serbia. <clears throat> you can forget about forget about a web server. Now is everything is at your your code level. Yeah, web server is just there to 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 host your code. Uh, not AWS SDK. So AWS SDK come to the picture is this right? Let me pause here. AWS SDK right? So what happened is this. Uh, just now you see later on uh, the lambda function will be executed and they will call the DynamoDB for the data items. Then how your function in LambdaDB, all right, write a call in Node.js to talk to DynamoDB service, we are using AWS SDK. Yeah, we are using AWS SDK. Mm. Yes, yes, okay, good. So now, who call Web API Gateway? Right, back to this. Yeah, so uh, remember, yeah, very, very, uh, shi tai, shi hi tan, hi, shi, eh, I forgot how to pronounce the game. Hi, shi, shi, hi tan, right, or shi tan, sorry, yeah. I forgot. Hey, how come? Huh? You just tell me, I, I ask you my pronunciation is correct. <laughs> no, I got confused again. Yeah, so this is learning. Huh? Because confused and you clarify, I confused again. Can you teach me again? <laughs> she tongue, right? I think so. Yeah, right. because I lack of confidence. So making me even more confused, right? Uh, it looks very humble. Actually, it's very lack of confidence. All right, he, 
Hitan, Hitan, yeah, Hitan. Very close, very close, very close, very close, very close to S3. Okay, let me back to this again. All right. <clears throat> okay. So in our lab, this application, which is a static website, contain HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, everything, but it is static, right? And then this guy is hosted on S3, right? On S3, correct? Yeah, correct, correct. So now back to the, uh, back to, sorry, uh, this is a long process to confuse you, but it's worth to explore it to see the clear picture. So now let me back to, uh, let me back to, uh, whose answer I forgot? Uh, oh, I forgot, I forgot. I, I, so, okay, so the event start with when the user uses your application, right, which is hosted on S3, right, they, the event, the first event come from user is select this guy, right? So this user events. And after this, after this, right, after this, you know, you were said already, the Lambda function will be invoked, and then DynamoDB will, uh, will go to DynamoDB to look for the table, right? So these are the things. And then the Web API Gateway will call the Lambda function, will invoke the Lambda function. Now is now the question is who invokes this web API gateway? Right. Yeah. So it's something like this. Maybe let's uh, so back to yeah, we select the breed, user events. Oh, there's something happened already. So of that, of that. I put a big point over here. Very good. Can you see this, guys? Can you see this? Can you see this? Can you see, right? In the code. Yeah. So what this Ajax is going to do is the Ajax, right, will send a request to Web API Gateway to our RESTful service at this URL. Okay, okay. At this URL, at this URL. They don't, you remember? This is Web API Gateway, where our RESTful service endpoint is there. Blah, 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 dot, blah, blah slash prod uh, some students ask me in the practical uh, what is slash prod because uh, we have a stage so you have different stage production stage development stage uh, test stage so in this case this we are using the restful service in the production stage right so you can change the url to anything it can be your local host right yeah so then we call the HS call to call this guy, and then we say uh, the parameters. What is the parameters? Right? Okay, I cannot see it. Yeah, so basically the parameters is a breed, right? Right? Breed, right? Where is this guy? Ah, uh, breed, breed. Yeah, you are right. Breed, stream, colon, double code, EGPT. More M A U M A U Egypt Egypt more. Okay, Becca, let me move back a little bit. So uh, your answer is correct. So what you then when the user use the application, select the breed right from the drop down box. This is the user events. Once this event is happening, which will call this function right uh, at the browser side. So what this guy is going to do? Wait 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 wait. You need to have this information about this breed 
Egypt more. Okay, if I'm not wrong, uh, you are asking for bridge string color Egypt pretty more, right? Okay, so we give me a minute. I will send a request to this web API to this RESTful service at this URL string. Uh, give me a minute, so I I'm, I'm going to do that. So I send an HS request to this to this uh, endpoint at this put uh, hosted at this web API gateway. The type is post, and then why need to stringify string stringify these uh, parameters, right? And then I do this anyway. The HTTP request is come out. The time out, right? Is three thousand. All right. So request is going on. So we don't know when this guy come back. So okay. So there is a the OKCB is a callback function, right? Let me see. Is it? It looks like. Yeah. Okay. If it's okay, means okay. If it's not okay, there is not okay, right? So we don't know when we call call this. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 So this code, I think, is standardized. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now I think we have a clear picture already, right? So now, uh, I think this discussion, uh, I think, is uh, quite useful, right? Now, let me bring you to our uh, lecture slides. Uh, this. Uh, Ding dong. Let me like a monkey. Let me climb up the tree to this learn resource, and then go to this climb to this part. Uh, then we have this lab, and then we have this lab file you done last week. Okay. Yeah, guys, everybody. Uh, I need to get your attention now to summarize our discussion, right? Talk about events. Okay, everybody, are you in the screen, uh, in front of the screen with me? Yeah, Vente, are you there? Save you. Okay, let's just get at the discussion, yeah. So our question, now, now it's very clear, everybody, and should be on the same page already. Everybody must have a clear picture already. Lambda function, right? No, we written in Node.js, right? Running on this runtime environment, provisioned by AWS Lambda, right? The good news is you don't have to provision EC2. You don't have to put the SSH to EC2. Write your code, put the code over there, and test it out. That's it. Yeah. And this code, right, will do this. Get the DynamoDB to look for the items based on the brick. Could it be all, right? It's done. It's working. It's working. And the key part over here is the Lambda function. Once we put there, right, if it's sleeping, yeah, so I use this word called sleeping. You you go to AWS documentation, you, you can't search for this word. This is my understanding, right? That means until you see this line over here, guys, until something here to wake up this guy, to trigger this guy, to invoke this guy. We call event driven, right? I, I'm talking about the slides, uh, only one word, huh? right? We get it, it means we get it, yeah? So now we look at our application over here. Say, take a look at the events, right? Is that it's like a so the key things we realize is a chain of events, right? Chain of events. Right? Let me uh, summarize them. Yeah? Uh, did you see Mr. G sitting in front of the web browser over here? You can't see, right? So it's hidden. I'm the user. I go to this guy, right? Sit here. 
right city here right okay where is my stuff we got lost we got lost right i'm sitting here i select the brick as a uh, wholesale this is the events right user select the drop down box or at the time when the page is loaded they try to unload there's a unload right there's some events right anyway so this guy once this events select the brick right these user events and these events will trigger our function make a ajax call ajax call can you see here make a where is it make ajax call to the endpoint to the endpoint right ask for this endpoint right tell me can you tell me okay must be applied huh? you the HTTP protocol could you please tell me what is the uh, you cat information for this breed select by the user in this parameter you see the parameters is breed string colon HTTP blah blah right so let me see ya. Uh, ding dong you see ya. Uh, you see, uh, the browser Ajax, if the Ajax call where it goes, goes to here, right? Uh, ABI, Amazon API gateway, right? Where is it? This is a guy, URL, right? We're not get lost. As long as we get this URL, we will, f we will, we will find that guy. We will, we will find that guy. Right? Maybe this guy is, sleep, is not working, right? Then we got an error, fail. Uh, if everything okay, there is a handle success. Means we got the data. We can't assume when we send a request to this Ajax call to the web API, we will get the data successfully. No. There are many possibilities. At least there's a two, right? Two, two, two possibilities. We need, and we don't know when this guy come, re re response come to us. So call back function. Let me get the picture, All right? Where is the picture? Call, call. Okay, so you see, uh, Ajax call come to Amazon API gateway worry. This is someone knock at the door, right? So API gateway has been evoked, right? For this particular uh, web service, right? And this guy will trigger the Lambda function. Okay, so this is the answer. Right, this is the answer. This is the answer. Yeah, <clears throat> this is the answer. Let me back to this guy. Event-driven solution. So just now we are talking about who really invoke this API gate uh, event. Who invokes this event? Who invokes this Lambda function, right? In our example is the event source is come from Web API Gateway. And who invoked the Web API Gateway RESTful service over there uh, is come from HS call from client side. And once this guy invoke, then they will call AWS service or resource, right? In our case, in our lab is DynamoDB, can be other services. So there are a lot of things you can do in this Lambda function, right? Okay, so this picture is clear. Clear, right, everybody clear, everybody clear. Yeah, everybody is very clear. Very clear, I think you are very clear because you did it. Uh, so I just highlight to you, is this something you know? Uh, 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 this is something you know, and then that's my job, right? This is my job. Yeah, that's my job. Based on the based on the efforts you have put in your practical, right? Then I just highlight to you, right? So everybody should be on the same page. Clear. Very, very clear. Okay. Very, very clear. So this picture start to talk to you. And you start talk to this guy, <laughs> right? Right. Then you can expand learning. And um, uh, when you call lambda function, are you sure it's only event sources come from AWS API gateway? Right. Then you can expand your learning, right? You can learn more based on what you have tried. We cannot try everything, but we must try. But once we try this, 
Oh, the event source is what baby again we are. Then your question is, could it be any other event source which will trigger our lambda function? Yeah, possible. Because our lambda function is event driven, right? So you just go to AWS console, you specify what events will trigger this lambda function, event one, event two, event three, right? Then you can do it. Yeah. Okay. Now we move to another topic is this. So once this lambda function is triggered, right? We need to we need to go to this DynamoDB database. Remember? We need to go to this, this, sorry, DynamoDB database, right? There's a possibility to say, once this code, I will put in the lambda function, right? We using, just now we say using AWS DK. This is AWS DK to help us to quickly, effectively, productively use AWS service, right? This is where AWS DK come to the picture. Right, and then we call this a lambda. And then yes, we have a table. We have this over there. And then the DynamoDB table say, "Oh no, it seems that you 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 are not authorized to come to my table to get the item or put the item. Right? You are not authorized. Your code looks correct, everything perfect, but you are not authorized. Or are you authorized to?" get this data from this table and put in a JSON format, pass back to the API gateway and put in the HTTP response all the way traveling to respond to the HS call. So are you authorized to get this data? This is a good question. This is a question we need to ask. Okay. Yeah, security, 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 right? So, let me bring you to another slide. Permissions, right? This is a permission. Our AWS Lambda code in our lab is to use the AWS DK to get the data from the particular table in the DynamoDB service. We use the AWS SDK, so it's very easy. Uh, but it's, the, the code is sample is there, so you modify and change, uh, you, you get it work, right? So the question is here. You need to have this permission to execute this Lambda function. Once this Lambda function, uh, Lambda function is executed, and then you look at your code is to go to the database, DynamoDB service or re resource. Are you allowed? Are you authorized? So in our lab, you may still remember, after you create Lambda function, then you assign a row to Lambda function. Where is the row? Yeah, you give permission to this Lambda function. So last time I remember, we give the permission to say, a oh, user one, you can do this, right? So we give the permission to users. Lambda function, you can go to the table, lost pets, to get the item. You are allowed to do this. So we, in this case, we are not give the permission to the user, but we are give the permission to the Lambda function. Right, Lambda function. Right, Lambda function. Yeah. So they, so you have, you set the policy, uh, we call, you still remember in the IAM, we talked about earlier, there is a row, right? It's a piece of paper over here, right? You see this checklist, ding dong, ding dong, okay? In this document, we call IAM policy, uh, IAM is identity access management, right? It's a security identity, right? And access management. So you, you in this rules you say what is allowed. So basically, if you put it in plain English, we want to assign a permission in this policy, in this document, black and white, to say you are allowed to go to this particular DynamoDB table 
to read the data, right? So in our lab uh, context, uh, we never write item new pet to the DynamoDB. We only read. So we put the policy over here. You are allowed to read only to DynamoDB. So this is our human language. This is the rules put in play English. But these rules will be enforced automatically in the AWS cloud environment. So we need to put the rules in the format which the computer the application can understand. So we put these rules in this JSON format. Oh, what are you are allowed? Are you allowed to do this? Uh, okay, okay, right? So this is a screenshot I take from the lab file. Yeah. Allow Lambda execute, right? Execute. There, another one is Amazon DynamoDB read only access. So when you come to this, uh, in the lab file, sorry, you never do this. This policy, this row, row called cast search row for Lambda, right? Is automatically created at the time where we start up lab file. So what do you did in the lab file? You just do this. Uh, this is a policy already created. You just apply it to the Lambda function you create. You just do the link. This is what we did in the lab, all right? So this policy has been created. Then you take a look. I also take a look at this JSON format. Uh, this policy is going to apply to the Lambda function we are, we are designing, implementing, testing, deploying, right? So this Lambda function will go to the AWS service resource, DynamoDB table, to read the data. So we, we give this permission to this Lambda function. In this policy, black and white, right? We put in the JSON format so the so yeah, so it can be executed automatically, enforced automatically, right? In JSON format. Oh, um uh you are allowed effect allowed. Allowed to do what? To do read only. Because for read only, you list item, describe, batch, get uh, the query. So these are the different ways to to read the items. Uh, you can get item one by one, you can query, you can scan the whole table, you or you can use batch get item to, to get more items, right? So this is what is allowed, effect allowed to do, right? Allowed to do in this policy. After that, we assign this policy to the DynamoDB, okay? And some, some students ask me, Mr. why you highlight to me to this? Number one, in the IAM chapter, I go through all of the slides, not all the slides, I go through the slides, I show you some demo, but you haven't got a chance to create IAM role, right, yourself. So there is a missing part. So our understanding is only uh, kind of at this stage. So now, it, I got opportunity to see what is the uh, role I'm creating to to tear this to so that we can assign the uh, this permission to the lambda function what is allowed right so I take this as a revision number two in the assignment right you are going to use similar approach to choose one existing web service, but redesign, re-implement it using this stuff, similar to lab five. So at that time, you will start everything from scratch. Of course, you can refer to the steps in lab five, but however, since you start everything from scratch, the permission, the IAM role is not created for us, right? Then we have to create ourselves. So this, that's why I highlight to this, and then hopefully it's useful way to this. Yeah, so yeah, so you, you will see this at the time. You will go to the IM, you see the rows, you see I create the rows, cast search row for Lambda, and then you 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 you, you search for Amazon DynamoDB read only, edit, Lambda execute, you edit. So behind the scene, it is a JSON format. 
OK, so now this is the key part. OK. Now you look at the policy we just created and assigned to the Lambda function uh, to give the permission to get the data from DynamoDB. So security part, right? Uh, this is a sample over here. Now I want to pause for a while. Yeah. If you look, if you look at the policy, the, the we call I am row, right? We have created and then there is a policy associated with this I am row. And this policy is put in JSON format, right? JSON format. JSON can be used for many, many things, not only for, for yeah, uh, the cache data is passed in JSON, right? So this for JSON use for move the data from here to here, right? JSON, right? JSON is used to move the data from Lambda DB to Gateway, and then Gateway put in the HTTP response body, and then response dot blah blah sent to this. So JSON is here to move the data around from one place to another. JSON, you see, can be used to write your policy and automatically enforce. Mm. You cannot write it in English because you write in English, plain English can only be enforced by human being. A human being like Mr. G can always make a mistake. I'm very good at making mistakes. <sighs> yeah. However, if you put the policy in JSON, you don't ask Ms. Mr. G to enforce this policy, you, they, this policy will be able to enforce automatically without human errors. Right. And it can be reused, 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 enhance, enhance, enhance. You say, oh, this, this, this policy, Mr. G, does not look so good. Eh? Uh, something is missing, or you, oh, you, you give more permission than is necessary. OK, I want you to take a look at this. So this is a JSON use case again. Okay? Many use cases for JSON, right? So JSON used for policy. So the policy can be automatically enforced, can be reused, can be enhanced. Very, very good. Yeah, so now I actually have a question. You need you to think about it. Sorry, I just excited. I forgot the question. All right. So just now we say this policy is put in JSON format. I'm reviewing, I'm enhanced, and then I say, oh, there is something actually, the scanner actually consume a lot of resources. I want to take it away. And then in my DynamoDB, I'm not using scan. I mean, you are not allowed to use scan. So I take away, right? So I take away. So basically, uh, I I remember we talk about this. They call the TRP. What does TRP stand for? Maybe not correct. I don't know. Okay, and then we take this as a question. What does the TRP stand for in the context we are discussing over here? We discussed in week, week two, week three, very long time ago. Yeah. Give me your answer in JSON format. <laughs> we will take a break very soon. 10 minutes later, yeah. My battery fled us, yeah. What's a TRP? Okay. Don't torture your students. T for the, air for least. Okay, now what is a TRP? What does P stand for? Uh, this is really uh, we learn in week two, week three. I forgot when we talk about IAM. Very close, uh, Jinghao. Today, uh, your class is very good. Everybody is kind of trying to raise questions, give comments, uh, give ideas, right? Some class uh, only have one student, <laughs> but it's good enough because they will encourage others. Yes. Privilege, yeah, privilege, the least privilege. So once I put the
met over here. I say, hey, hey Mr. G, this Dano would be scared. I think it should take away from the JSON file for the policy associated with this row. What is this row name called? Cat search this row. Okay. Notes taken, I take away. Right? Because we in our team, we know the best practice is the least privilege. So no argument. Right? I will say thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, very good. Yeah, so very, very good. Huh? Now, I will give you uh, exam tips. And we don't know at this stage what is the, when is the exam uh, conducted on site or online, but it's just a format, right? So the topics is the same. Look at this policy written in JSON, and we are continuously reviewing this policy or reuse this policy right, in our company, in our team. You see, our team is so powerful. Why? We are continuously involving, reviewing this, right? So when the auditor come, we tell them why we have this policy. They ask you, do you have policy? Yes, why is the policy? Explain to me why you said this policy, right? The auditor only needs the answer. You'd say, I follow the least privilege, I experimentation, I do all of the things. This is how we look at this. And then you can copy the version after version. You say, previous version is like this. This version is like this. This is how I continuously reviewing, re improvement. This is evidence. While well, the auditor, they just write down whatever you put. Take a screenshot. I say, hey, please don't take a screenshot. Why? Because based on our policy, there's a security breach. You are not allowed to take the picture of this. Just write whatever, right? In other words. So, my, sorry, I forgot my question already. The question is, look at this policy, right? I want you to review what we talked about before. This policy look like white list or look like black list. Wireless, right? Wireless. Wireless means what is allowed. When you come to the resource, in this case, any DynamoDB table, what you are allowed. The effects, tapa tapa call effects, colon, allowed. Uh, of course, uh, you notice uh, you can use the value instead of effect allowed, you can say effect disallowed, right? But over here, yeah. They are using allow. So in the policy, we just say what you are allowed to do when we ass assign this guy to the lambda function we design. So what this lambda function can access, can do, allow to do, right, to the resource or services. Allow, right? What is allow? Remember what we talked about before. <laughs> right? Think something like this. I forgot. Yeah. For example, you give me the inputs. I say one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, give me two only two characters, right? But must be any number between one, two, three, four, five. Right? So this is what you allow to give to me. So this while list, not only you can see apply here, even when you write the regular expression to validate, validate, validate the user inputs, either at the, uh, where is this? Either at the client side, JavaScript to validate, or when you come to the server side to validate. So the best practice is to use white list, right? So here is another example to show you the white list. Uh, in action. Yeah, of course, for some use case, over here, effects colon can be disallowed, right? We are going to take a break. And then uh, after the break, I want you to ask you guys a question. Yeah, so the question is this. Uh, just now, when the user select the braid, the braid is this, right? So this is the events. And then they will make HX call to the WebAPI gateway. So WebAPI gateway has been evoked. 
after Web API Gateway is invoked, Web API Gateway will trigger the Lambda function. And Lambda function code, be, before that is sleeping, and then start to execute, all right? And then when it execute, they check the permission. They want to go to DynamoDB. The permission say, yes, you can, based on the policy. And then get the data and all the way pass the result back, right? So event. So now we move to the very, very early stage when the user click the select the breed. Then what is the select, right? Breed string, each of this, right? And then we will send Ajax request to call the web service at this endpoint at a stage slash prop, pass the parameters to this guy. And then why we, bef the data, why we need to do string file? I, I'm not very sure why I need to string file. Why don't just put the data, the parameter as it is? Yeah, so we come back and then take a look at this question. But this is beyond the scope of our cloud computing, but it's uh, just for, for learning purpose. So we will take a break and come back. I think you deserve a 10 minutes break because we have a very good discussion with your guys. Uh, hopefully everybody learned something uh, based on your practical experience and you can learn more from there. So we'll come back at 19. We'll come back at 19, okay? 19, all right? Take a break, okay.
Yeah. My mic now is working, right? Olama. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> now uh, I repeat what I just said uh, in one sentence. So the event was user select the braid. This is the event uh, come from user. After that, the our client side will know what braid the user is looking for. You look at the parents. And then after that, we pass the data, everything, including the parents, to invoke this Web API Gateway RESTful service. So once Web API Gateway will receive this, they know what braid you are looking for. And then pass these parameters to our Lambda function. Hey, Lambda function, uh, please find out what is the uh, pets uh, under this breed. In this case, what baby are get away? Trigger our lambda function. At the time when they trigger the lambda function, they pass the parameters to us in the event object. Through the event object, right, our lambda function will know what breeds they are you are looking for. And then lambda function executed, hopefully with the permission you will assign it's just enough for this lambda function to perform the this duty. Then go to the dynamic DB table, got the data, and then so at this time the requests go through many stages. In your secure coding, you will see many middleware, right? Many layers. And then after that, the response will move back to through the similar stages. And then in the end, we will probably will get OK or fail. If OK, then the data about this particular break will be displayed. So before we take a break, we, we have a question over here. How you select the button, select the select the things, we, we know what is this guy select, which break, right? Then before we invoke the web API, uh, right, we prepare the data, and then we use JSON stream file and then put the parameters in this function. So the question is why we need to do string file. Yeah, so uh, what is your thoughts on this? What's your thoughts? To convert into a string, yeah, correct. To convert a JSON object to a string. Then, yeah, so and then still, uh, I, 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 I don't understand why need to pass, why need to convert into a string, right? Why need to convert, why need to convert into a string, right? So I still not very sure why you need to convert into a string by using JSON string. Why? 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 Yeah. John G, you are right. It's convert this object into a stream. All right. And then on the on the right track. And then you think further, why 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 into a stream for what? There must be a reason, right? What's the reason? What's the reason for this? Have you ever asked yourself? Okay, to understand this answer, I bring you to the picture again. So this guy select the brick, right? We know the brick, oh, blah, blah. And then, is a, then just now the parameters is inside, the, it is in the JSON object. And then we convert to JSON string. And then after that, after that, we go all the way, send an HTTP request. So why at this stage we need to JSON stream file to convert the JSON object to string? Yeah, you look, you refer to this picture, you will know the answer. But I need to get the answer from your guys. <clears throat> I will adjust my aircon, save energy. Too cold, too cold. 
for DynamoDB to query and scan for requested cat breed. Yeah, you are right. For, because at that time, you were your lambda function, you, you, you need to know what is the breed, right? And then you must query this in the end, right? So actually, you're right. But now, let's forget about the lambda function, forget about Amazon DynamoDB. We just look at these two endpoints. One is a web browser, they click, select, we know the params currently in the JSON object. And then, before we send HTTP request to this Amazon API gateway, they convert this guy to JSON string. So let's just think about these two endpoints. So the rest, we don't care at this stage, right? We just put the context like these two to see what is the reason why we need to convert JSON object to JSON string. Yeah, the, uh, sorry, uh, this is the only, only I think uh, <laughs> the only lecture <laughs> talk about this in whole Singapore Poly, maybe the whole Singapore, all right? So because it's boring, I mean, sit on the lemon tree, I have a lot of questions. But it's good to think about it. Let me adjust my hair count. Send H2 request to my hair count to lower this. Uh, uh, to cold. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> so, anybody? Yeah, Savi is very close. Uh, uh, it, yeah, you're, you're I think, uh, ahead of the the staff, right? Lambda, they, you need to get the T dynamo DB table. So, if we look at this tool, right, what is the reason? Yeah. And convert your string is correct. So why you need to convert to a stream before we send Ajax request to this Amazon API gateway? Nobody? I hope I can get the answer from you. Passing the API for them to know which endpoint you are going. Uh, the endpoint, right, uh, nothing to do with the parameter at this stage. The reader is, we always specify the endpoint, in, which is the URL string, URL, right? So we were, we from here, we know which endpoint we are going to send to. We are going to send to this guy, right? The URL. When we send the request to this URL, we want to pass the parameters to this API gateway, which is to tell this guy what is the breed. And then we do have the, we know the breed is select from a user. It's like this, right? And then, right? Then we send this to, put this, so the key here is, we already know the API gateway, but we send the request to this API gateway, we need to pass the parameters, right? So the parameters must be in the string. So that's why we string file it. So why must be in a string? Mm -hmm. Time out, 3,000. So this part you, you can you can you can kind of tuning right. So in your use case in your application, what is a good number to put? And you have to test it, right? Test it out. All right. Success. Okay, we got the data, and then we filled out what we need, right? And then handle success. Okay, so and I answer because the API gateway only accept JSON string. Close. 
but not really. Not really. Very close, but not really. Hmm. But you are right. The API gateway was upon receive the request, uh, the parameters, the parameters, the breed is in stream. <laughs> It is in stream format. Yeah, is in stream format. Yeah, very close, very close, but not one hundred percent. Not one hundred percent. If you understand this, uh, when you go for your further study, when you professor uh, talking, when you work on this, uh, you know everything already. Why we know everything about this? Because we keep asking ourselves questions. Right. OK, so why? Any other thoughts? Refer to the picture. Refer to this picture. Refer to this picture. Just look at these two endpoints. Right. Forget about the rest. OK, let me highlight this to you. In this picture, they say dynamic, uh, this part is missing a lot more. Dynamic API, right? Dynamic API. Dynamic API, I, 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 I cannot edit. I don't know how to do. All right, so just cancel it. You just leave it, yeah. So dynamic API course over HTTP, right? So what the code you look at the client side is to basically is uh, call the web API at this endpoint through HTTP, right? Through HTTP, through HTTP, right? And then HTTP of course got a method, right? So in our case, you you in order to get the get the pets based on the breed. Your HTTP method sent to us must be pushed. Okay, why? Because we divide, we de de design, define our web API in this way. Now, of course, right? In, in, in this way, so you must follow when you call our web API. Must be pushed in this case, right? And then, what does this content type mean? Content type application JSON. What does that mean? Right, it's JSON now, right? J JSON, JSON string. That is a JSON string. Right. So data JSON string file this, right? When you look at this picture again, which is saying uh send this request over HTTP. So take pause for a while. HTTP is a packet, right? It's a packet. This packet got the header and got the body, right? So the back to the the parameters, which is a uh, breed, right? These parameters need to be put inside the HTTP packet, right? Need to put in HTTP packet, either HTTP header or HTTP body. Remember, HTTP is just a packet, so how can you put the breed? How can you put the breed, which is selected by the user, this JSON object, right? Put into this packet so that this can be delivered to this API gateway. You need to put the JSON into a string so that you can put in HTTP so that your request will be delivered over this HTTP. That's the answer. Yeah, that's why you need to stream file. OK, have you got it? Yeah, so why is so very simple? Because you look at the picture, HTTP request, right? Send over, right? 
copy, copy, copy all the way to the internet. You see, this is a very short line, huh? can be very long now. Huh? Copy, copy, copy all the way to the internet, copy, copy, copy. So it will be delivered from here to here. You want to be delivered to this, which contain these parameters, right? Everything must put in HTTP packet, must pack it. Are they, you want to put in the packet, you need to stream file it, right? Stream file, okay. Deliver is for deliver purpose. In other words, why you stream file it? is to for deliver, for deliver through HTTP, right? That's that's the answer, right? That's the answer. Let me back to the source code over here. You see, initially what we put here is the param, right? Is an object, is an object. Break stream, take a, hello everybody, break stream, break stream without any double code. That's the key. What's the break? This is the one. Once we convert into the stuff, right? Then they were string file, and then they were put into a string, right? We were put into a string. They were put in a string. Okay, they were put into a string. They were put into a string. Uh, I put in a string. Yeah, put into a string. Uh, in uh, sorry, uh, what, what what is happening is they were they were become a string. Uh, anyway, how the string looks like it will be double call bridge string double call column double call Egypt M A U double call. So it will become a string. So that these parameters, in this case, bridge will be able to deliver through the HTTP and hoping hoping all the way through the internet arriving at this web gateway site. You are right, web API, web API gateway, right, will be receiving this, right, where is this guy? We're receiving the string from HTTP packet delivered, like for example, if I send something to you, right, a uh, birthday gift, right, so I will, this gift need to be packaged and then delivered to you. So in this case, we deliver to HTTP, copy, copy all the way, right? Arrive at this Web API Gateway. And you are right, at this stage, Web API Gateway will, will receive these parameters. We will know the, the brick, and this is in string format. Okay, okay, we'll be in a string format. After that, API Gateway will be able to, to convert back from the string to an object so that it can be easily, when you invoke the Lambda function, they can easily, from the event, they will be able to get what parameters. Just the event, dot, blah, blah, dot, blah, blah. So we'll convert back to the object because the transfer already done already. So now it's come to the processing stage. So API Gateway will do us a favor, convert the string back to JSON object. Yeah. So that our Lambda function will go to the event dot blah, 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 easily to figure out what is the break. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I think is everything is clear. It's for delivery purpose. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's good to know, right? Good to know, good to know. Okay, now let me move on to this uh, lecture 10. Uh, lecture 10. Oh, like a monkey must climb this again to the tree, lemon tree. So where I am, right? Lecture slides, I jump to lecture slides branch and then jump to another branch of the lecture slides, which is this, this API gateway. All right, so there's a very good videos uh, to kind of talk about this. Uh, please, if you have time, take a look at better understanding. Okay. All right. So API gateway. <clears throat> So just now in our lab, right, uh, lab five, 
we create a Amazon API gateway, and then we define what the, uh, the after that you will be able to see what the URL to this endpoint we are defining for the rest for service. Even though at that time we don't have Lambda yet, we don't have uh, uh, DynamoDB yet, it doesn't matter. You can straight away uh, kind of define this API gateway and populate this gateway with some mock data, right? Mock data, you can still test it, yeah. So <clears throat> what is this, right? So after that, our client will be able to send a request to the API gateway, yeah? API gateway, where is API gateway? Yeah, any clients can, web client, mobile client, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, so gateway, come to the picture. API. So these are the advantages of this part. So API gateway, right? So in our lab, so just now you see the client, right? It just called to this API gateway. So it doesn't matter. You, our Lambda is not ready. Our DynamDB is not ready. You just build this, right? Rest for what the where is where web API, what parameters you are going to receive. Just decide define this interface. I want you to I say at this stage take a look at this API. Right, so this API, right? Every day we'll talk about this, right? So this, uh, just highlight to you this. So sometimes we call web API. Sometimes we call REST for API. Sometimes someone call REST API, right? They can call anything, it doesn't matter, right? So the, the, the key part is, I want you to take, this is the interface, interface. Yeah, I is for interface, right? So for example, if I have an application like this, I want to call your web API, right? Just tell me the interface. Oh, what's the URL? What parameters I should send to you? And a so on and so forth. What method I should use, post or get, right? This is the interface. I don't care, are you using web API gateway? Behind the web API gateway, you have Lambda function. After Lambda function, you have this DynamoDB table, no SQL database server. It doesn't matter. For me, I'm writing this. Just tell me the interface, okay? It's your job to do your stuff, right? And it's black box to me. Uh, what I'm interested in is really interface, okay? So <clears throat> this is the interface. Tell me the interface, API interface. Right, once you define this, and then you can link to Lambda function. Of course, in the future, you will realize not only can link to Lambda function, can link to other stuff as well, right? But the 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 client, whether it's web client, mobile client, or other stuff, right? They only interact over here. Yeah, interact over here, okay? Yeah. So this is a lab scenario. Yeah, just forget about the rest. Just Lambda function behind API gateway in our uh, situation. Okay, so how to do it? All of my Lambda functions have not been created. Uh, then straight away go to create the web API gateway. Yes, you can, because this is a Lego block. You build this, you test this with mock, mock data, and you can already talk to your client already, right? But it's just the data you pass to them for this breed of the cats is come from your mock data, hard coded data over there. But it works, can talk, can talk through the API. Alamo, you forgot to JSON streamify your parameters. Okay, then you do it, right? Then later on, after this building blocks done, then supposedly you work on Lambda function, you test with DynamoDB, this is done, then you link these two together, right? Step by step. So that's why the left five one, right? Well, so many steps, 100 plus steps, right? But I think you 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 are doing well, right? And then continue to try. Okay, so that's a thing. They create, uh, what's the endpoint configuration? They create the rest of API. So in our lab, we only use the method post. So of course you can add, get, put, delete, patch, Right, as in our assignment, you can try more, right? So this is API gateway, and then once, so you can link to this, right, or this, right? 
So this is the interface. So this is the URL is similar to the AWS console. They come to us, right? So just now the, the client sent an API request. Uh, now is already arriving at this what may be a gateway endpoint. Over here, this line is a long line. We don't know exactly how long it is. This is the internet. The HTTP request, we just put the parameters uh, after string file, we put it inside the body of HTTP, deliver all the way to arrive at this interface. What may be a gateway? It could be a long way, may not be reachable, can be fast, can be slow, we don't know. And finally, we arrive at this URL, gateway, get the request, get the parameters in our case. And this parameters currently, it is in the string format, right? There you can convert it, you can map it a little bit, or just go through straight away, send to the endpoint. So this endpoint uh, could be Lambda function later, we will link together, or for testing, if Lambda function is not ready, then we just put a mock endpoint, just get some data of this, uh, what you call uh, pets. Yeah, to see how this client can interact. And then in our lab, what we have done is to use this. Yeah, the test, 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 and then let me show you the postman. Show you the postman. Where is the postman? Yep. So we have got this already endpoint. PROD is a stage, right? Right. Oh, this is very interesting. Yeah, you guys. Yeah. API, based on the API, based on the documentation, this is endpoint. In order to get the cats belong to this particular braid, we need to use method post, right? This is slightly different from what we have tried before. Yeah. You, Normally we use get, right? But in the lab we use post. It's okay. This is interface, okay? If you use get, you cannot get, right? Only can post, right? So you can do this. Yeah. Oh. Got it. Right. Got it. So at this at this stage. You really don't know where I give you the data from this URL, from my mock endpoint. You don't know, right? From the Lambda function, I call it, I trick it, I invoke it, and then this Lambda function work with the DynamoDB. You don't know, right? You don't know. You don't have to know. <laughs> All right. You, don't have to, you only know this, right? Okay. So can you do me a favor? I pass you this, my URL. Oloma, what happened? Mm, what happened? Oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Wait, mess up, mess up, please. Let me test again. Okay. So can you do me a favor? On your side, are you able to use Postman to test my web API? Let's say, for example, you use my web API like this in your client, in your website, and then you got a problem. You see, cannot. And then, of course, you see, let me use Postman to test this to see what is happening. Can I get it? So yesterday, I asked the student to try. They tell me, yeah, so I will, Xavier, I will answer your question. Why use POST? But now at this stage, take as it is. Uh, since you are using my web API, I tell you in the documentation, when you call the pads, give me the braid you are looking for. You can give me wall as well. And then I will give you the data. The HTTP method must be POST, right? Get does not work. So let's leave this question for a while, right? Why the AWS guy, when you build this lab, they actually, they allow the user to get the, get the pets by calling invoke this web API. 
uh, normally normal practice use HTTP GET, but why use POST, right? But I just, oh, oh, oh I got a headache. But in the most situation, if you play with the uh, industry standard web API, not our own web API, from what I experience, most of the time when they get the products, get the stuff from the web API, they use POST, right? Okay, I will explain to you why. Okay, guys, can you open up your Postman and test my web API over here? Because let's assume your client, you cannot access this, right? And there you see, let me try using Postman to test out to see what is happening. Yesterday, the class told me I, from their side, they say cannot. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I think it should work, right? You must follow. If you get, you cannot, uh, right? You must post. Yeah. Get cannot post. Right? Head also cannot. And uh, options also cannot. Internal server error or main. I think it should work, but yesterday student tell me does not work. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason it should not work because your side, my side is the same actually. Because I'm not hosting my web API locally, right? And I testing postman using this locally. Right. Is the place in the cloud. When I go there, when you go there, they never ask you any questions. Say, oh, okay, 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 okay. No security at this stage. It's very dangerous, right? <clears throat> How about others? Does it work for you? Does it work for you? Does it work for others? Mm, okay, yeah. Now, Xavier asked me the question. Actually, I also have this question. Why they use POST instead of GET? Well, actually, in my, in my application, I want to get the cats based on the breed, right? So this is your question, this is my question. This is a question you have, or others may have as well. A very, very question. Very question. Very good question. All right? <clears throat> yeah, before I answer your question, I, I, I want to ask your question, right? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, ha, la, 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 how to bring down this guy? How to bring down this guy? Postman will work on our behalf, wants you to send, they will send HTTP request to the web API endpoint through HTTP. Finally, they will arrive at our web API gateway. Then they will help us to put everything into a HTTP request, including the headers. And where is it? No headers, right? Hey, how come? Header. Headers. Hey. Hey. Oh, hey, headers. Yeah, the hey, headers. Uh, in the headers, they say, oh, content lens uh, 337, which is means in the HTTP body, we have 337 kind of bytes. And what is contained uh, in the HTTP body? Uh, application JSON. This is a date. Okay. This is response. Hello. How can I see this? E, 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 e. This is response header. I, I want to look at the request header. E. I want to look at the. Yeah, so end of the day, <clears throat> a person may were using, they are not using Ajax, they're using curl command. 
right, to send a request to this endpoint, right? And then to, this is the header, cache control, no cache, put a token, and then <clears throat> the data is this, dash T, breeze, stream, pause, blue, right? Can see this? Yeah. So in our code, we are using HS to code. So this guy is the curve to code. I think behind the curve, they are using HX as well. Right, so data is here. So once re re our HTTP request, copy, copy all the way, arrive at a web API gateway, our web API gateway will take a look at the data over here, right? They will know what is the break we're looking for, okay? Okay, so the header just now I cannot see, but over here you can see this is a header. Cache control, no control. And then put a token uh, for postman. Uh, that's it. Right. <clears throat> now. I show you the HTTP body we put over here. Now, I want to you to take a look at this question. You look at the postman. They have HTTP header, HTTP body. Inside the body, what do you see is a JSON object, or it is a JSON string. What do you see over there? Mm, it's a stream, right? <clears throat> so that they can put it into the body. JSON object, if I'm not wrong, is the format is similar, but it's like this. Bray stream, like this, like this. This is a JSON object. This is the key, a value. If it's a string, everything must be string, right? Something like that. Yeah. So if I say like this, they will see what is the 400 error. Right, 400. Okay, guys, what is the error code start with four? What does this, what does that mean? Four, what does that mean? The API gateway give us a response because I straight away put in JSON object. And then nobody help us to convert this JSON object to JSON string. So we send this as it is, right? Got problem, All right? Then whose problem? Then look at the status code is 400. So you know there's a lot of status code, status code start with, sorry, is four something, four, three, only three digits, three X access. What says, once you receive the response, HTTP response, from the server, in this case, Web API Gateway, and then API Gateway at this endpoint tell you status code is not 200, right? It's for something, something. What does this for something, something mean? Huh? It's error. Is an error. Because we are talking to the Web API Gateway, let me bring you the picture again. We are talking to the Web API Gateway from our side to Web API Gateway. Yeah, bad request, correct. So this for something, something, return from the server. The server tell you, hello client, your request has something wrong. They talk to me, it seems that when you send the request to me, something wrong, right? The client side, remember? Let's say you are the client side, I'm a web API gateway. So if I receive your request, I say a four XX looks like a bad request. Huh? So in this case, the client need to look at the API gateway, the documentation, whatever, to see what's wrong with my HTTP request, right? And sometimes when you send a request to me, all right, your request, nothing wrong. However, on my server side, when the processing got something wrong, Right, so I cannot blame you. Oh, better request, huh? No, I know your request is correct. 
I know as a server side. However, when the process, for some reason, my DynamoDB, I cannot connect, and my code is correct. And uh, because uh, I forgot to give the, uh, the, the, the permission to this Lambda DB, Lambda function, right? So then something wrong with me. So then you cannot say, um, I, I want to complain. 400 is your problem. No, it's 500, five something, all right? Five something, okay? Five something, clear cut. Okay, wrong now, and it's three digits. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? And you see already put into string. Nobody will do JSON stream file files when we use the tools. You must make sure this need to be put into stream. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And body. Yeah, this JSON come back. You see this string, double code, double code, right? Everything is string, right? So we're receiving the string. So of course, if you think further, the client side, you receive the stream, but it's very difficult for your client, for your JavaScript, whatever, to go through the stream, say, what is this, what is this, right? You must convert this back to the objects. So on your side, you say, blah, blah, dot something, dot break, blah, blah, dot gender, blah, blah, dot something, easy to process. So we need to convert back to the JSON object automatically when you use some framework. Don't worry, okay? Now, I want to address this question now. Xavier, so when you design the web API, right, if you allow the user to send request to this URL at this endpoint, and then you must tell me what is a break, you must use post, normally use get. No, I never say normally use get. Huh? Normally use get is what we learn in the school, what we learn in the practical. It's not the really the practice in the, so for those robustic, resilient uh, web API in the industry. Yeah, it's not the practice over there, right? So now the, 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 it doesn't matter which one you choose, right? So we need to understand why we don't use get, when, why we need to use post, right, in the lab. So this is, a uh, Xavier is very polite, huh? sir. Yeah, it just seems Jila or G Pension will do, right? No need to say sir, okay. In lab five, why do we use post instead of object? Well, you are right. Huh? All the more you send this request in string, huh? never in JSON object. <laughs> right? You send it over to me. Right? Okay. Uh, I'm Lambda function. I'm processing. Uh, I go to DynamoDB. I go to Google to search. Take a long time. Huh? Must be asynchronous processing. I will call you back. Or I can give you the preliminary answer. Right? Could it be a wrong answer? So, Xavier, what's your choice? You want me to give you the partial answer, or could it be incorrect, or you give me some time, let me process asynchronously, and then give you the answer. Which one you choose, Xavier? Which one you choose? Well, negotiate. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> process means what? <laughs> give me time to process asynchronously. After I got the current answer, I think I will call you back. Can you give me a callback function? <laughs> Can you give me a callback function? Uh, joking, huh? So all of this is happening when you do the program. What I just talked to you, right? Now, let me address your question, right? Why are you using post, right? So when you're using post, where you put the breeder? Look at the screen I share with you. Look at the screen I share with you. Where I 
I will deliver this. Postman will deliver this request, HTTP request sent to your web API gateway at this endpoint. So inside the HTTP request, the delivery, delivery, all the way there is the information we are looking for. So in this case, where we put this brick, where we put in the HTTP request, where we put. Xavier, you are right, body, yeah. So sorry, I, I want to bring everyone on the same page. Uh, let me just look for a picture. Let me look for a picture. Uh, your class uh, is on the right way to learn by yourself already. Actually, I don't have to teach because based on the question, based on answer, I know you guys are trying and have this level to learn by yourself along, along the way, together with your friends. Huh? Let me search for a picture for you to illustrate this point. Uh, let me search a picture, okay. Recently, I'm a little bit depressing, I think. Okay, so I cannot find a very good picture, but this is a picture I over here. Let me share the screen with you. Where is it? Is this all? Yep. <clears throat> Can you see, guys? Can you see this picture? I'm sharing with you. Can you see? Wait. Hello, can you see the picture? Many, many pictures over there. Yes, okay, sure. So now, Savvy just answer. Uh, when we use it post, <clears throat> we'll send HTTP request. So let's visualize HTTP request like, like this. Actually, it may not be so accurate, but you look at this, this is a header. 
this is boring, right? So just now we say when you send a request to the web API at this particular endpoint, you need to tell this guy what is the brick. So we, we in the JSON string, right? Uh, JSON string we say tabaco tabaco brick blah blah blah. So it's put inside the body. What does that mean? Means it's not put inside here, not in the header. It's inside the body. Yeah. So what is the difference? Between HTTP GET and HTTP POST. If is HTTP GET, right, the only choice you have is put the parameters inside the header. You have nobody, right? So it's very lightweight, just like that header. So your, what is the string? What is the bridge you are interested? Right? Yeah, over here. Uh, remember this guy last time we we play with the we play with the. Web API, for example, we have something like this. We have something like this, right? HTTP or HTTPS, blah, blah, abc.com slash. Uh, we come to our API. I come to our users. Hello, Web API Gateway. I want to know the user information, the ID equals to one. So this is what we are familiar with, right? So in this case, when you construct HTTP request sent to this particular web API, this is endpoint, and then you pass a parameter, oh, user ID equals to one. So what does that mean is, of course, you are using get, HTTP get. So how does this request looks like? This request looks like this. Nobody, because you are using get. So this, Body is not there, right? So where, but the thing is, you must tell the web API what is the user. So you put the user ID over here, right? Slash one, slash two. This is how you use HTTP GET. So come back to our context, our example. We when we call the web API gateway, right? We need to tell the web API what is a brick. If we use HTTP GET. You only can put the gateway, uh, what is it called, breed over here, right? And all the parameters you are passing to the web API gateway using get, right? Everything there is in the URL, right? So this is first choice if you use get, right? All the parameters is in the URL. However, if you use it post to get this, right? As in our case, as I just asked you, your parameters, where what is the breed, you will not reflect in the URL. Instead, you the parameters is put inside the body, right? Put inside the body as what you see over here. Postme. Where is my Postme? Where is my Postme? 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 Yes. You see? Inside the body. If you use it get, right? For example, you probably you will see a breed and uh, what's the value of the breed, right? Blah, blah, blah. You will put it in the URL, right? Yeah. So that's the difference between get and post. Right, whether you get a post when you call the web API your interface, I must tell you the brick. If you need get, the only way to give you is in the header, in the URL. Right, when you post, right, you have the choice to put the parameter inside the body. Right, so which one you will choose? Right, which one you will choose? So you understand the difference now? Hello, guys, understand the difference? Understand the difference between HTTP get and HTTP post. Either way can do. It's just a matter of how to give the web API the breed. I can give you the breed in the query string, in the path, in the URL, which is HTTP get. Or I put these parameters as what we de design in the lab in the body. So which one you prefer? 
that, that's the thing. Now you can make a choice already. Now you can make a choice. Kui Yang, which one you prefer? You want to put the uh, parameters in the URL, or you want to put the parameters inside the body, which is not in the URL, but in the body. Which one you prefer? Yeah. So the question, let me repeat myself. When the code of the web API, right, and client call us, or you are defined, you are designing your web API, you have these two options. Or oh, I ask the client to call me, uh, pass the breed, blah, blah, in the URL parameters or path. Or I ask the client to call me, put the breed inside the HTTP body. So which one you prefer? The first one is HTTP GET. The second one is HTTP POST. So which one you prefer? Which one you prefer? Well, which one you think is more secure? Which one you think is more secure? Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes, in the body is more secure. That's why first. Because you see, uh, you see, uh, uh, I, 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 I move away from personal already. I don't have time. I just go back to the slides to talk about this. Now you see personal, right? I have to share the slides. Okay, you see, uh, If you allow the user pass the parameters, user one, right, in the parameters, so the user can easily say it's user two, uh, user three, uh, user four. Uh, they can manipulate the URL, and then this this ID, whatever, is, is exposed, right? So not so secure. That not mean you put in the post, then it's secure already. It's just, say, more secure than this. Then we still have to move along the way how to further secure our web API, right? But at this stage, looks like more secure, right? Okay. Okay, everybody got it? I, I, I then can move on. All right, okay, okay, okay. I, I think I, I waste you a lot of time. Huh? But it's just this basic APC uh, fundamentals uh, is good to clarify, it's good to ask. Okay, I think I have answered this good question from who uh, I forgot, I, I, my brain is really not so good, right? From who just now? Yeah, whoever from our students. Thank you very much for the good question. Let me uh, move on to it. Yeah, let me move on to it. Move on, move on, okay? Yeah, move on. So nothing wrong when you choose get, uh, but it's just, it can work as well. And then you tell the client, hey, call me out uh, when you use get, uh, right? So it's just a kind of interface. So no difference, uh, but in the security perspective, uh, it's more secure, right? But that's not mean it's, it's really secure. You still have to move along the way. What we highlight to you is to defend in depth, right? Defend in depth, defend in depth. Yeah, so this is just one layer, one layer to, to, to defend our web API, right? So, what are other ways to defend our web API? So, not currently our web, our web API, right? Nobody, anybody can 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 use it, right? Anybody can use it or may. It's open to everyone, right? So, invoke the rest for API. So, it's just you have the URL slash the stage name. In our practical, it's called PROD. And then you follow the interface, how to call it, right? How to call it, right? Maybe go to 400, that means our request got some problem. Uh, maybe it's 500 and then uh, server problem, then you do the retry, right? Okay, and then you can monitor and so on and so forth, right? 
So develop AWS Lambda uh, using AWS DK. So just now we mentioned about AWS DK because when we write the Lambda function, our Lambda function in Node.js need to access the DynamoDB table, right? So uh, how to do it easily, right? They make use of AWS DK. So this is what we are doing in our lab. All right. So just now there is a security part. I I, I haven't addressed yet. Oh, over here. Okay, last slides. Tired. Are you tired? Right. <clears throat> API gateway. <clears throat> so this is the endpoint over over here. There's the interface, right? Oh, when you call me, I use HTTP post, pass a parameter about the breed you are interested in the body. Uh, so this is the interface. You have to call like this. Does not mean anyone can call, right? For example, in this particular website, right, uh, you can call. Where is this website? Yeah. You can call. Let's say someone from www.abc.com, we can tell them uh, you cannot call my web API, all right? Yeah, so this is something called course origin resource sharing, right? Uh, you can specify which website, right, can invoke this web API, right? Course origin resource sharing. Right, this is one thing. Second part, you can do the authentication. Say, oh, when you, when the user come to our website, right? Uh, instead of doing this, we ask this guy to log in, authenticate themselves, and after successful successfully authentication of the user, uh, we know who this guy is. Authentication done, and then based on the authentication, we know who the who the user is, and then we take a look whether this particular user authenticated is authorized to access our web API. So we can bring in another layer of security, right? So, oh, Alamar, this user cannot. If you can, they have that call the web API, right? Just now I show you the truck. I forgot where is the truck. I show you the truck. Wow, this, these two students are very polite. Huh? Yeah, so you send the request to Web API Gateway, you put the braid information in JSON stream, put it inside the body, right? And when the truck move all along all the way through the internet, before reach your Web API Gateway, Mr. G, hacker, intercept this HTTP packet. Oh, I see, oh, oh I, I see the string inside the body, right? Intercept already, yeah. Maybe it is not found for me to intercept your request. So probably after the web API gateway trigger the Lambda function and then your Lambda function go to DynamoDB, you got the data all the way back, right, to the web API gateway. And web API gateway put the JSON response back to this. Oh, no, not this. JSON back, JSON response, JSON response, all the way back. I click XHR. I need to refresh. So I will see in the network part, I should be able to see the response. How come can I see? Yeah, never mind. Yeah, can I see? Okay. Uh, it's paused because it's it. Yeah, so it's a request. I see the response come back. Arrive at the client side. Let's assuming how they can arrive at the, the black side, uh, the web browser side. Uh, they were hopping, hopping all the way, right? All the way. So this response you put in that body uh, because you cannot put in the header because response print is a lot. You, the header does not fit. Right, you must put in the body all the way come to reach your side. Another way, I intercept your packet. 
oh, I see all wow, these JSON data pets, right? Uh, so good, right? So how to secure it from intercepting? How to secure it from intercepting? Can I have some inputs from your guys? How to protect? Or request response, right? Re let's say response, like how HTTP come back all the way to us on the way, and then someone intercept our HTTP packet, right? How to protect from it? The last question for today, guys. How to protect from it? You see, yeah, our HTTP response JSON data contains a list of paths under this particular braid to the JSON stream, right? Copy, copy all the way from Web API Gateway all the way to our browser. And then in, on the way, someone intercept this, intercept, right? How to protect it? How to protect it? La, 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 how to protect it? Hmm. And then inputs. Just, can you unmute yourself? Uh, can they talk to me? Save image as. Desktop. Image. Can you? You any 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 inputs from you? Quan, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, my eyes. Quan Jing, thanks for your answer. Out of one hundred marks, I can only give you ninety nine. Oh, maybe it's one hundred. I I I don't know. One hundred or ninety nine. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah, I'm not very sure. Yeah, so it's one max. Error, right? I think it's acceptable, right? So, which one you like? 99 or 100? Which one you like? Quan Jing, Quan Jing, yeah, Miss Quan Jing, which one you like? You like 99 or you like 100? Quan Jing, <laughs> overflow, <laughs> cannot, right? You cannot go through the regular ex uh, expression while list the range is only 100. Uh. 101, okay, I give you 101, 101. Because you got a one, you can start to move to 102, okay? Yeah, good question, good answer. All right, so today is quite interesting, but I feel very tired. Insert, uh, let me get the picture. Uh, get the picture. Desktop. Temp. I like this picture. I also like today. I also like this picture. I like this picture. I like this picture. Okay, so this is the last slide for today, I think. And then later on, uh, I will open the channel for Q and A. I will bring the Q and A probably to uh, in the asynchronous manner. Okay. Yeah, but but you must ask questions, right? Dun, 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 dun. So we we'll talk about this. Yeah. And then someone intercept on the way when the response come back to us, right? Come back to us, right? You can't prevent it, right, from happening, right? What do we say? Please go ahead to intercept, right? Of the intercept, our JSON string, which contain a list of pets on a certain braid put inside the body has been encrypted. So what you intercept is a cipher text, right? Not plain text, right? Of course, at the end of the day, when this truck arrive finally at our client site, we see it is what you call 
is in plain text. But when we delivery on the way, we deliver on the way, we, we technically, we, can we use this term? Because you need to know. When the data in transit, okay, can you see transit? <coughs> we need to encrypt it. So in case someone, right, intercept it, please go ahead, just do it, right? But they don't have the key to decrypt it. So what they get, uh, they cannot understand. But that normally they cannot understand forever. Maybe uh, five years, 10 years later, they, for five years, they keep it, try different ways to, to decrypt it, and then finally they get it, right? But this statement may not be true once the quantum quantum computing come to the picture. They say they can decrypt it in, in, in one minute, right? So currently, yeah, under this, okay? Yeah, so you see, yeah, encryption, decryption along the way, SSL can come to the picture. When they use the web API gateway, are we already using HTTPS already? Yeah, we are already use HTTPS already. We didn't do anything. You see, uh, let me recall. With what baby gateway has already helped us to do this already, guys. Good news. You don't have to change the lambda function. You don't have to change the code. You make use of the service provided by web API gateway. Then we have done. You see, HTTPS is done. Wow, oh, so easy. Why? We never change our lambda function code. We never do anything. Because in front of lambda function, we have a web API gateway. What's web API gateway? It's a service. So HTTPS kind of things already done, right? Okay, good news, right? Good news. Okay. Yeah. Good news. Good news. So I leave these slides right to you. Yeah, so after I retired, I will move to the boat over here, right? To enjoy the mountain and the water and then the birds, right? Right, so that's an interesting lifestyle, All right? But you can see over here, really, we kind of define in depth. Cause, authentication, authorization, uh, once the data in transit and kind of things, then of course lambda authorized. Are you sure you're authorized to 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 access the source, right? And so on and so forth. So you see, this is really a very holistic picture of so-called good example of defend in depth, defend in layer. Okay. Uh, maybe I show you another picture. For today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a soccer game, right? You have defense in many, many layers. This guy looks like the last layer, right? So defend in depth, defend in layers. I think it's the same common sense. We apply everyday life. All right. Okay, so what I'm sharing with you, which is like, which, which is, well, let me double check which one I'm sharing with you. So this, we come to the end of the today's lesson. Yeah, so this is the one, right? This layer, soccer, middle field, right? And then blah, blah, defense in layer, defense in depths, right? Defense in depths. With this, I think I end the lesson for today. And then the rest of the time, uh, you work on the lab, continue work on lab five on, uh, on your assignment. Then, okay, wait. Let me see. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. 
OK, guys, uh, I think I need five minutes to go to the assignment specs as well. Assignment to take a look. OK, five more minutes. Huh? What time? I, I'm not really sure what time is now. Five more minutes. OK, five more minutes. Take another look. So we talk about the uh, lap five. Uh, then we talk about the uh, lectures about Lambda, event driven, then what baby are gateway, once received the request, will invoke this Lambda function or trigger the Lambda function. The Lambda function has given us the permission to access or read only in our case DynamoDB. So this is a whole picture. And then see how it can be related to our assignment. Okay, let's take a look. Five more minutes, sir. So, serious, sir. Okay, five more. Okay. Uh, let me go to the. I think I have the specs open. I just make sure I share the screen with you. Is Word, Microsoft Word. I think this is all. Yeah. So, hello, guys. Can you see the Microsoft Word? Uh, screen I'm sharing with you, right? Can I, right? Just give me say, can, can or cannot, can or cannot. Are you still in front of the screen? Maybe. I think so. Now, the task related to the cloud computing part, we say there are two parts. One part is lab six and seven, where you have uh, host your staff using these services, right? In these uh, services. And then we know how to use a AWS API gateway together with Lambda function and uh, work with DynamoDB in the back end so that our client will be able to call our web API gateway. And then in our lab five, get the list of pets under a certain breed, right? So in our assignment, we want you to pick up one existing RESTful service, redesign, re-implement, and deploy using this platform, right? Use this platform. Yeah, you pick one, okay? So this is how this lab five, and then the topics we cover today are related to this assignment. Yeah, so let me get some. Are there any questions about this? Any questions about this? 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 Any questions about this part of the assignment? Any questions about this? You know, you can see how to apply, right? <clears throat> Where you work on this part of assignment. Sure, the results for service can just take online can just take online and add it. What does that mean? Rest for service can just take online, then add it. Mm, not very sure about the question. Mm. Are you talking about lab five or you talk about uh, uh, existing rest for service? Yeah, existing, yeah, existing. Existing means you because you are given a source code already, right? And then you are working on the source code, how to harden the code, and so on and so forth. So in the source code, they have many web API over there. So you pick up one, and then you deploy it using uh, Lambda API gateway and Lambda function and DynamoDB. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so similar to lab five, all right? Similar to lab five, yeah? Lab five, you already run the, I have rest for service already using this approach. So you use the same approach, similar approach to redesign one of the rest for service, redesign, yeah, redesign. Yeah. So this approach, right? Second approach is called serverless computing.
Mm -hmm. Okay. So the assignment. <laughs> Task one. Right. You have been given a zip file, source code, right? And then you go to AWS service. You say, oh, AWS, can you give me a virtual machine, right? A HTTP, uh, sorry, put SSH to it, update operating system. Then you install application platform, in this case, Node.js, and then all the tools. Uh, to manage Node.js application, and then finally you get zip file and run it over there, and then you continuously patching all of the things. So this is part one of our assignment. And then the code itself, we put in S3 or put somewhere, and then double get the code to the virtual machine. So the first part of this, you have to manage server. The second part, you are redesign, pick up a web service, you redesign it using Lambda function, Web API Gateway, and DynamoDB in this case. Really, you, as what you have done in Lab 5, you don't have any server to manage, right? You just put the code in the Lambda function, build and deploy. And then for the server, how to configure the instance, how to update, uh, how to continue the patch it, all is done by AWS, right, when you are using Lambda function, right? So this is called serverless, blah, 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 blah. Then there is big term, is called serverless computing. So in assignment part two, task two, you are using serverless approach. You put efforts in a team, write the Lambda function, work together with DynamoDB, and then test, 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 and then uh, put it behind the WebAB gateway. You don't have any server. You don't have to put TSSH to anything, right? You don't have to manage the operating uh, runtime environment. You only specify, tell the Lambda function, oh, please give me Node.js runtime environment. Then the version is blah, blah, blah. That's what you don't have to manage the server. Right, so this is part two of our assign, assignment you are doing, right? Similar to level five, and then technically, the this is called service, right? Yeah, so before we say goodbye, uh, let me double check. What do you mean by service? What do you mean by serverless? Serverless, so serverless. What do you mean by serverless? What how do you understand the serverless? Give me some keywords uh, as a feedback. You refer to the slides, right? Your own words, how you understand serverless. This is last question, and, and then we'll see goodbye. Good luck, right? And take care. Yeah. The column right side is a part one of our assignment, right? Right side is part two of our assignment, which is similar to lab five. You only concentrate on build and deploy your code. You don't have to worry about the server, right? So it's kind of serverless deployment operations, or you heard some term called serverless computing, right? This is what you are trying. But after you're trying lab five, you are using serverless approach. So what does that mean for you? What does that mean when we talk about serverless computing? I have answer from you. You can refer to the slides. Yeah. And then stretch a little bit. <clears throat> okay, guys. What does that mean for you, serverless? Now you can unmute yourself. You can quickly give me some some feedback, and then I I can get a sense of it. Mm. Jing Hao, yeah. When you Jing Hao, when you work work on the lab five, uh, do you have to manage server? Do you have SSH put it to the server? 
Do you have to patch the EC2 instance? Do you have to do it? No need. Why? Who is patching this, this OS, manage the server for you? When you put your code in Lambda service, who is do this for you? Provider. They are provider. They are provide this Lambda, Lambda service, right? So as developer, you deploy, build a code, put in the Lambda, right? Of course, Lambda must be running in the computing services, must have virtual machine, whatever behind. Someone must take care of the patches, security, right? Someone need to make sure have enough computing services. If you have 10,000 requests come all the way through Web API Gateway, I come to your Lambda function, and your Lambda function need to have enough resource, CPU resource, server resource to run this Lambda function, right? To respond to these 10,000 requests come to us at one time. So all of this is managed by the service provider, Lambda service. So our job is build and deploy applications. So all of this is done by Lambda service itself, right? This is called serverless. In other words, don't get it wrong, serverless does not mean you put the Lambda function running over there, you don't need any server. No, you still need a server. You still need uh, the resources to run your application, Lambda function. But this server is managed, right, by Lambda service, by AWS provider. So our job is to do this, okay? So this is called serverless computing, okay, right? Okay, so thank you very much for attending. Right, participation and give me answers and questions to so that make our discussion more, more fruitful, more interesting. And then, right, okay. So, uh, when you work on the lab, uh, work on the what do you call assignment, you will have questions, right? So, uh, put a question in the meeting chat or not that's the meeting chat, but the chat, our team's chat, right. Because then, what if you have already completed lab five, so you can move on to lab six, or you can move on to assignment. Alternatively, what you can do is to, uh, let me see. If you go to this uh, vocarium, if you go to vocarium, you will have two classes over there. One is something called cloud developing, right? Is it? Yeah, then you click module five, or oh no, lab five, is it? Eh? No, lab five, you click this, and then you see all of the stuff. So this is our practical, where our practical is doing the AWS. So when you start the lab, all of the resource service necessary for our lab will be provisioned, created automatically. Then your Lambda function, API gateway is working, your Lambda is working, your DynamoDB is working, everything is working. And someone already put a uh, screenshot, whatever, as a quick part of quiz, and some students forgot to put, a, put the things, and then they have already completed the lab, and then all of the things you have done is terminated, deprovisioned, right? So it's good for lab, for, for exercise, but this platform is not suitable for us to continuously work on our assignment, right? So what we prepare for you is this. We prepare for you this guy. Another class, when you go to Vocarium. Ah. You see, deactivate. For me, I don't have any remaining credits, right? So because I didn't manage properly, I, I keep running because uh, showing some demo here and there. And then even while I'm, I'm sleeping, the resource service is still running, right? But you should see something like $50 right over there, right? And then every time you are using 
it will be detected. And then, uh, so it's our responsibility. So it's the good news is when you work on assignment, you have this. So you can go to AWS console. This is your account details, right? Yeah. And then you can take a look at the credentials. And then you feel cool, straight away go to AWS console, right? And then after you finish this, whatever service, API gateway, Lambda function, DynamoDB is still there. And you don't have to worry about Lambda DB, Lambda function, because Lambda function put there, it will not be charged until this Lambda function is invoked. Yeah, so it's fine, you just keep there, right? But but please monitor what is the remaining credits, whatever things you have when you work on your assignment. Yeah. So my suggestion is if for those students who already finished lab five, right? Can we redo the lab five using this account, right? Using this account, right? Using this account. Yeah, to see what problems you were encountered. Right. And then, uh, you see, Ms. G is the same. It's just a different account, right? Uh, it's not the same. Why? Because if you use the previous account for the lab, when you start the lab, a lot of resources has already been created for you, right? Right, create, create for you. When you do this over here, even when you follow the lab, right? Uh, you are starting everything from scratch. Right, it's your own, like your own account. Nothing to, to do with that part, right? So that's the difference. So you can try it out in this account, try the lab file. So what I have done is, uh, if you're using lab file, the previous account, uh, once you start the lab, uh, the S3 is created. And then the static files for these uh, cat, cat things, is already put inside the S3, right? Where you start the lab, where you start the lab, where you start the lab. However, right, however, what I'm doing. However, when you use this AWS console, uh, the another account, right, for your assignment. So you have to create the S3 and then put the static website over here and hosted this website in S3. Right, so this part you have to do manually by yourself when you work on lab five using the new account. So what I have done is I have downloaded the static website for the lost cat. So you can download it to your local and then unzip it and then create S3 over here and put the things over there and then host this guy over this. So this part we have to do manually. Then another thing is, uh, so you can go through this, create Amazon, uh, all of this uh, similar. Uh, the only part missing is the 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 row, right? The row assigned to AWS Lambda function, so that this Lambda function will have the permission to access to read only data from the pets table. So in the lab this row is automatically created, right? So when you are using this account, right, for assignment, you have to create the row yourself, right? Create the row yourself, right? Uh, so that's why in the lecture slides, I highlighted this to you. Uh, where is it? Uh, I highlight this to you. I highlight this to you. Over here, right? Is it over here? No. Uh, I highlight this to you. Highlight this. This is bad. Talk about uh, yeah over here. So you need to give some permission to the 
lambda function. So in the lab environment, they would, would already create this IM execution row. So in the lab steps, you only need to assign this row to the lambda function. So when you start from scratch using the uh, account for assignment, this row is not there. So you need create first before you can assign to the lambda function. Then the sample I I put here is this. This is a sample. Yeah, you go to the IM console and IM. Then you choose the rows. You click create the rows. And then put the permission over here. And then after it's done. And then later on you assign this row. Uh, you can use the same row name as in the practical, right? And assign to the lambda function. Yeah. So in short, uh, I will suggest you to do the lab file in the <clears throat> in a new account using new account. Okay. What are the problems you may encounter when we start everything from scratch using serverless computing, right? Mm. Okay, so that's all from me for today. Uh, please feel free to share with me any uh, problems or questions, right? Put in the meeting, uh, put into the Teams chat, right? Okay, so any questions at this stage before we say goodbye? Yeah, I think I hold you a long enough, right? Hopefully, you guys learn something, bring something with you useful, all right? Yeah, and then continue to try it out with your friends, your team members, and continuously learning. Okay. No questions, right? Okay. So then we draw for the assignment. What type of diagram we need to draw? Uh, so we we just address this in the later stage. So the diagram actually, uh, I just give you one example, right? So for example, this could be a diagram, right? You customize it and they uh, kind of fit into your environment, right? Uh, to show how, like in task two, this is what basically you are doing, right? And then over here, we don't have the kind of uh, a, a I am role assigned to it as you can in the diagram you can add on right so and then how the SG is hosted your static website right they probably we are not using cognito in our assignment so it's similar to this we, we have so many pictures uh put here and there right you you can just draw uh draw the picture and then uh to to tell the story of how your work what application looks like, how it works, right? Okay, Guan Jin, I think just give you a short answer like this. Yeah. All right. So, okay, I think uh, you guys need to take a break. Okay, yeah. So, take care, man. Thank you very much for participation, right? And then, uh, yeah, so it's time to say goodbye for today, right? And meet you again. Maybe I will arrange a one hour session for Q&A during term break, right? So you wait for my announcement. At this stage, I'm not very sure because I was involved in early admission exercise. So uh, that one, so I don't know when I'm free. All right, so just, I will send you an announcement, all right? If there is a Q&A session or revision session, uh, in the, I, I, I only need one hour, right? One hour, right? Okay. Yeah, wait for my last. Okay. 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 So that's all from me. Yeah. Okay. Then thanks for participation. Okay. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm.